let's end it on these because I think these these really really pissed me off when I saw them because it just goes to speak about how lazy I feel like this company is in general and just how annoying they are as a company it just pisses me off so we're going to talk about Nike of course and I saw these on my timeline and it just they just drove me insane and these are the new Nike air motifs right and they drive me insane because they're obviously playing on the strings of sneakerheads with having Tinker Hatfield, the legendary sneaker designer of the original Air Max 87 in the background there with his flipping traditional, what you call it, um, fedora hats on that are fucking annoying. You got to bend that and burn that immediately, Tinker, please, for the love of God. But again, he's designed some of my favorite shoes, the Jordan 4, the Air Max 87. I'm not sure if he did the Air Max 90, might have done. Uh the air trainer one like stuff that has basically formed my education and my knowledge base in terms of sneakers right that's my those are my things genius of a guy but for whatever reason every new shoe that he's done so far it's not really been that great <clears throat> and for whatever reason it seems like like you have a real resistance in terms of making newer shapes like just doing new things it's all retro it's all kind of taking old things and modernizing them or bringing them into the 21st century or adding bells and whistles it's like no <clears throat> what i've always been annoyed by is that for the most part a classic air max one i feel for the most part has been popularized mainly because of sneakerheads yes general people wear them but the main reason why people care about air max ones is for sneakerheads that's why they've created fucking air max one day or air max day right a weird kind of like um what you think called a weird sort of uh self-flagellation session that nike gave themselves where they can make money and also get to kind of stroke their own dicks cool no problem but it's mostly because of sneakerheads popularity if that's the case why not make them to spec so that sneakerheads would no. So why not make them two spec for the community that you're clearly trying to market them to? So far, we haven't had one decent Air Max One retro in terms of shape. Yes, we've had some good collaborations. The Pata one recently have been really good in terms of shape. Cool, but overall, the quality of an Air Max One, the shape of them compared to some of the vintage shapes that you see in lookbooks or scans or whatnot, or you might see creep up on eBay, they're not the same. And I've never understood why retros, especially when it comes to Nike, that they're pushing to sneakerheads. Why did they, why did they just take the Adidas approach and actually take a retro, a vintage shoe, and actually retool it, get the mold, whatever you need to do, and bring those back to spec with the right proportions, with the right profile and shape and bubble size and materials and whatever. Just take some care and attention the same thing that Adidas did with the campuses and the superstars 80s where they reverse engineered them and basically offered them back up to sneakheads at a kind of elevated price or whatever it may be and they lapped them up why can't you do the same thing with the Air Max 1s with the Air 90s with the Air Max 90s sorry with the Air Max 87s with the Air Max 97s with the 95s all these Air Maxes that are clearly positioned and marketed to sneakheads especially when Air Max Day Air Max Day comes along <coughs> make them to spec exactly to the year that they came out profile everything shape with the right tissue inside the box the right box design the car make them properly and then just bump up the price and say hey these are 200 pounds these are 300 pounds i'd buy them happily because i'd much rather have that than have you make a 2022 version of an mx1 that looks fucking hideous who's gonna wear these these are going to be a favorite of the Eastern European community, wherever you live in the world, instantly. That's who's going to wear these things because they look like an Air Max. What's that one that all the usual peers wear in London? The Air Max 270. Is it Air Max 270? Nike Air Max 270. Is it 270? Yeah, it's a 270. These shoes are the flipping, you know, being one of the popular. It's like the new uh what are they called rejuvenates i don't know whatever it's, it's definitely that shoe that basically captured the eastern european community for some reason i don't know why but those new air motifs that they've put out or that they're due to put out look exactly like that there's nothing separating that flipping air max 2270 that you see when you're out and about in some dodgy area somewhere in london right a flipping hungarian romanian off license somewhere you see a guy in his tracksuit wearing these and you know not to test them or say nothing because he's probably going to kick your head in right but these are what they look like and they're boring 
you're using Tinker Hatfield's design base to make these. Like, why would you do that? Why not just save that waste of material that's going to end up in some scrap heap somewhere with some turtle gargling on a flipping shoestring and just make good shoes or make new shoes or make retros to spec and sell them to sneakerheads who you're clearly trying to market them to? Because sneakerheads aren't going to buy this. This is going to be a shoe that's going to be popular with regular punters who aren't going to buy them at full price. They're going to wait to get see them at TK Maxx or they're going to be in JD Sports. Less of a markup in that regard. I don't get it. I really don't get it. They are absolutely hideous in every way, shape or form. So dead. Like they've, t they've just taken the Air Max 1. And again, you remember the original sort of Air Max 1, the 87, right? There was a whole big window thing and supposedly they took them off because if I'm not mistaken, in terms of like quality control, a lot of them would bop or burst and stuff. So they kind of encased the bubble a little bit more to make them somewhat um, more durable so they wouldn't break and whatnot and malfunction. Cool. But that was what they told you. But what they keep doing with these 270s and these shoes is they keep showing you that they can actually make a fat bubble. They can actually make a bubble that protrudes a bit, right? But on an Air Max 95... You get a bubble that looks fucking terrible, right? It's terrible compared to the OGs, right? Look, look at the MX-35 bubble. That bubble compared to like, the, look at that new bubble they've got. Look how look how in close that is, this shit. And then you you type in MX-35 and you say vintage, right? And then you see how fat these old school bubbles were back in the day. Look at that protruding popping out and they tell you oh we can't do that anymore because they would burst and it was too much bruv improve like you got billions of monies like fucking make them figure it out but there's but for some reason they, they they can figure out with these monstrosities they've got this massive bubble hanging out there oh, i hate them so much bro like honestly there's nothing that gets me as more annoyed than the fact that Nike seem to be hell bent on retros. They don't seem to be have any sort of vision in terms of like actually making new shoes and actually offering something interesting to people. It's just retros, retros, retros. Cool. If you're gonna do retros, do them properly. Actually make them to spec. They don't do them to spec. They do them halfway. And you know Nike fanboys lap them up anyway because you know they lap them up like I do. I'm not gonna be dismissive of that fact, but it just pisses me off to no extent. Cause look at this look at the mx1 vintage right or the mx1 big window it seems as if, if, if that's what people can list them as oh big window window let's see see look at the back in the day look at that with the og bubble look how big that was look at how big that was and if i'm not mistaken yeah there's a design reason for it. i forgot what the reason was for it back in the day but look at that look at how big that is look how big that bubble is and let you are you telling me they can't remake shoes in that way for some reason why why can't they do that why can't they why can't they take that air max one in that shape that box that's behind him this, this sneaker guy this sneaker collector with his fucking vintage windbreaker on is all looking sick why can't they take that and basically re-engineer that entire model from the bottom to the top every fiber every panel of it and put it back out and sell it to sneakerheads at a marked up price instead of making these motif monstrosities why tell me why tell me why not just make that why not just make that and let's read some of this motive bit nike introduces the air max motive inspired by tinker hatfield's first ever nike air max shoe tinker man you're you're letting them destroy your legacy with this stuff bro why are you having your name on on this shit like honestly Anyway, it continues. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, I didn't get up on screen, did I? Yeah. Was it the one? Yeah, this is the one. That's the image I was talking about. Why can't you just get that and basically retool it with every fiber, right? Take that take that exact Air Max 1 that came out in 1987, whenever it did come out, right? Maybe a few years before that, a couple of years before that, before they changed the bubble, and just remake that model, please, instead of making that motif. It's like, who, who's going to wear this shit? Anyway, Tinker Hatfield is responsible for some of Nike's most iconic offerings, including but not limited the Air Max One. And with the newest Air Max silhouette, the brand is paying homage to both the designer and his beloved design. Is he dead? No. Could you just redo a shoe that you obviously fuck up all the time? Yes. Just redo this shoe. God Almighty. Um, dub the Air Max motif. The shoe is effectively a spiritual successor to the Air Max One. No, it isn't. As it borrows many of the same ideas, it doesn't borrow, it steals them. It looks horrible. It continues. For example, the mudguard, as well as the general profile, could easily be mistaken for Hatfield's creation. What? <sighs> 
I knew it was over when they did those. Have you seen those Air Max One SBs? I knew it was over when I saw those. I was like, okay, cool, it's over. These guys are taking the piss out of our lives. Air Max One SBs. Have you seen these shits? I knew that was over when I saw these Air Max One SBs. I thought, okay, cool, Nike are taking the piss. Why couldn't it just get a skateboarding is one of legitimately one of the most interesting sports whatever you want to call it to explore sneaker design in terms of the needs and the rigors and the kind of <coughs> strains that get put on the shoes and whatnot in terms of design you could come up with some really interesting shapes and models right pertaining to who the the, 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 the flipping skater is some skaters like shoes with a lower profile some skaters some skaters like vulcanized shoes some skaters like they have stuff bulky thinner tongue laces padding no padding heel support no, whatever the options are limitless instead you give them this an air max one mock-up like like what of an of an sb that's been what they just took out the bubble made it a bit fatter like made the toe more squared like what the fuck is this like what is this what is this shit waste of material this isn't sustainable it's the thing all these brands talk about sustainability and saving the environment but where where did these shoes go they they don't end up on the feet of sneakheads or actual skaters they end up in what some skip somewhere they end up what down the throat of some duck somewhere gargling struggling for breath that's what they end up right absolutely bullshit and it continues um the the hits of suede and mesh though uh begin to subvert <laughs> subvert you telling me this is this shoe is subvert oh this is i don't know man some of this shit so uh, establishing a more dynamic contemporary and feel alongside the shifted um eye stays even the branding follows suit the heel features a spliced embroidery the tongue a more minimal display of the model's name and the swoosh is an opaque outer layer and a, a, a latter of which mirrors the sole just under four yeah and they've even got a why has it got a clear sole why why is it has a clear sole tell me why there's a clear sole in there what so you can step into the future like oh my god god oh my god for a close look at their motif and it's six up and coming colorways take a sneak peek and again i say sneakheads because why would you send sneaker news press shots of this shoe unless you're trying to market them to sneakerheads why why would you oh yeah kids why would you i hate this so much man i hate it so much anyway this is the this is the models the colorways you've got the classic white and blue like, look at that shit it's, it's an abomination legit abomination i don't know how that passed the quality control test like what's that is that like a denim mudguard it's all not even a suede is it is that denim <laughs> oh i don't know bro yellow colorway all black colorway what's that zen gray sort of colorway white and in the women's i guess with the light -y colorway yo this is so shit it's unbelievable how shit these are what a waste of materials what a waste legitimately what a waste i have nothing more to say man i'm just gonna end it there before i start cussing people oh look my hair is flaring up as well but oh my god legitimately all the money wasted on r d in this shoe developing it focus grouping it sending it out to influencers and shit you could just especially if you're that's the thing i would prefer if they actually made newer shoes but if they're hell bent on doing the retros just remake these remake the ogs remake the actual 87 with the big window to, to spec not not the shitty way actually make them to spec please for the love of god because apart from some collaborations that we did with the pattern in terms of the shape, so far the shapes of new Air Max ones have been terrible. Unless you do this, what people do, where they stand at an angle and they stuff their feet at the bottom of the toe to make them look flatter than what they actually are. But the shape of the Air Max ones are terrible. Or you've got really nice, cute feet like this guy has, or his pin rolls. It looks like he's got like a size eight or nine shoe or something. But that's not how Air Max ones actually look. Why not make them to spec like that, like the actual OG shoes? Make them to spec please for the love of god then sell these to us sneakerheads for 200 300 400 dollars we'd happily buy them because we're already buying the crap that you're putting out anyway that's above that's way above what we should be paying for it like even the bws the ogs are they are they good in terms of shape compared to the ogs no they're not i, I don't get it man you got these in your arsenal i was saying oh the tooling's too expensive it's hard to remake them it's not 
billion dollar company. I don't, I don't accept those excuses. Just buy a vintage pair and remake it, bro. How are these China companies or these, sorry, these replica factories in China able to flip and make shoes off of this one sample they're able to get? They take a Rick Owens geo basket and they can make a whole size run of flipping shoes off of that one shoe. Why can't you do it with these? I refuse to accept it. Just make this remake them again. This is not even a big window. This is just a regular window, but it's still got the profile. It's still got the materials, the swoosh at an angle, the great laces. Like it looks brilliant. They could easily sell this to our sneakerheads for two hundred, three hundred dollars, and we'd pay for it easy. Instead, we get this shit. Air Max Motif. Motif. The motif is go in the bin. The motive is these are going to be sold in TJ Maxx, TK Maxx. Like, what? JD Sport Specials. Fucking garbage. Imagine if you're a sneaker store. And in order to get tier zero product, they make you buy these shits. Like, that's what, I'd imagine that's what they do, right? You have to buy some inline GR type stuff. This is what they push to you. P sell these. Sell these against all the nice collaborations you've got and other things you've got. <sighs> So someone who walks in who wants a pat to Air Max One is somehow meant to come in and also be happy to get these if they don't have the right size and the patterns. Yo, they're taking the piss out of us, man. They really are taking the piss.